Yeah, what do you... Wiggle, wiggle. Hello, everybody. Uh, we have a new set coming out. Uh, and I'm doing a wantsy sponsored pre-release event for it. Uh, Ikoria Lair of Behemoths. Uh, it's got this nice owl, this other nice owl, this third off-screen owl. Those are all pretty good. Um, it's got uh, Godzillas. It's got like all sorts of incredibly huge monsters. I, I am pretty happy with how it f has this like unique feel of like a pseudo Zendikar world, like adventure world, but it's not adventure world like D and D adventure world. It's adventure world of like yo. Uh, if you go into that swamp, there's the, the, the ancient, uh, giant hippo who just eats dinosaurs for breakfast. And it's like, oh, and it's also an ancient sage who will teach you the wisdom. It's like, oh, okay. Do, do I have to bring in something? A dinosaur. Oh, okay. But yeah. So that's where, what we're going to be doing today is showing off the set. Uh, we're going to do a draft. Uh, and that's going to be new and improved. Uh, and then we're going to do some constructed. I've got a number of ideas. People have brought some other ideas to me. So we're just going to roll our way through those with our collection. We have a little shiny here. I'm not really sure what that is all about. But, yeah, so this Watsy sponsored pre-release gets to start. Let's start things off. Um, it's actually quick. Do we still have all our... Yeah, we still have our decks from the last couple. Excellent. But yeah, we're gonna we're gonna be doing stupid decks. I've got a couple ideas of my own, a couple ideas that others have come up with, and if you've got ideas while we're doing deck building, I'll I'll take them under advisement. Um, good to see all our decks are still here, though. I guess Lazav Titan Bolus never actually took off. Anyway, the big thing I want to show off today is probably the most important addition to Arena. Flat, like I don't think there's a more important addition to Arena. And that's this button here. Premier Ikoria Draft. And you might wonder. Wait, okay, I know there's like draft, and I know there's like traditional draft or whatever. Um What the hell makes a thing premier? Well this part. The uh the premier half of this is that we're playing with people. No longer do we need to draft with robots. We can draft with humans. So these are uh, fairly expensive. Uh, basically, they're like double cost. Instead of 5750 they're double, but the prizes are also higher. Uh, things like that. It's a best of one. You don't play against, necessarily, the people you draft with. In this, we probably will, because, you know, it's a pre-release event. There's only so many people streaming this. Um, but so it's, it's like the leagues on MTGO, where you draft and then you play against other people who have drafted. So you're not necessarily playing against those who you drafted against. You could, but, you know, probably not. Uh, and you don't have to play. You can play on your own pace. You can draft your deck and then wait, I don't know, a couple weeks, roll with it. Kevin, I'll thank you for the sub. Do you have any opinions on a Corey now that's out? I haven't played with it yet. I, very hard to form an opinion on a thing I have not yet, uh, I've only looked at. So we will perform that as we play today. Um, Dick Vaughn, thank you very much for the sub as well. All right, let's go ahead and do this. So let's see what the... Ah, so jumping in here, you get a... I guess these, you, you get the, the Mothra's Great Cocoon. Check this shit out. Oh my god. You get, uh, so these are the Godzilla cards that exist. They're like skins over a real card. All right, we got filled seats. Let's go. Time for a draft. Ah, I'm so excited to draft with humans. Ooh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yadaro Wandering Monster. This is a good start. Uh, Yadaro Wandering Monster is an 8-8 Trample Haste for 7. You can cycle it for two. When you cycle it, it shuffles into your deck. If you've done that four times, instead of shuffling it into your deck, 
put it into your into play. Um, let's see if I single click. Okay, now it is the pick. Other cards in here. Oh, uh, yeah, Flourishing Fox. It gets bigger when you cycle. That's cycling one. Cycling is a mechanic in this set. You see a lot of we got new and old cards with it. Mutate is a mechanic in this set. Mutate lets you play a card on top of another card uh, and combine its abilities, not combine its stats. Um, you can only mutate onto a non-human. Um, other things of note in here. A lot of cycling. A lot of cycling. Anyway, we got the pick picked, so we're gonna... Yes, so this is with humans. So, like, right here. Okay, you can see we actually have three packs waiting on us. Lore Draxis. Okay. That is, uh... So the rare was picked out of here. Ooh, Sprite Dragon. Whenever you can... This has prowess plus one plus one counter. Blue looks very open here. Capture Sphere. Oh, no. Please let that out. Um, I like Sprite Dragon. Um, Dreamtail Heron, whenever this creature mutates, draw a card. Whoa, that's really strong. Yo. Hmm, I kind of wonder if that's the pick here instead of the... But the Sprite Dragon's really good, too. Hmm. There's also a Fertilid. Sorry to everybody else in the, the, the... I know that this is, like, at my pace rather than other paces, but... Like this nice spider. It's a good spider. I'm going to go ahead and go with the... I'm going to try the Dream... T no, we'll, we'll do the Sprite Dragon. We'll confirm pick. All right, we got another Lord Draxus. We got a Porky Parrot. Ooh, here's another... Uh, Porky Parrot is pretty neat. It taps. So mutate again. You mutate onto a non-human, and then it gains all of its text, and it can have the power and toughness of whatever one you choose. Um, Primal Empathy. You draw a card if you have the highest creature... You or you make a creature bigger. Another capture sphere, phase dolphin, some cyclers. Blaze volley's not that great unless like you're playing against uh, humans and I don't want to main deck it. I'm gonna go ahead and go the, the por porky parrot. This is already a, th a four mana three four and like the mutate. Kind of uh, like the mutate. I want to see what mutate looks like in game because like so see here here's the thing. Like we get to go. Um, turn two sprite dragon. Turn three porky parrot onto the sprite dragon. Right. Also, Lord Draxus is really good. I thought this card was going to fly, but it doesn't. Let's go ahead and pick that. Alright, um... Friendal non-combat damage that would be dealt to this... Oh, this thing just can't be bolted. Bird Goat. It's the Brushwag. The Brushwag is back. Yeah. Okay, Mystic Subduel. That's low. But, like, removal all abilities is pretty nice. I think that might be worth picking up. There's also some nice red in here. Whenever you cast a non creature spell, pulls one counter on this. Um, this thing is a cycling liker monkey. That might be fine. There's also white. I, so, I noticed black is near God in here. We'll not pick that up. We're going to pick a Mystic Subduel. Want to get some removal going. Mentor. When Mentor comes to play, Menace Counter on a non-human. And then plus one to a Menace creature. We also have a Capture Sphere. Capture Sphere seems important. Ooh, hold on. We got a Glimmer Bell here, too. Now, Glimmer Bell is... Uh, we're, if we're going to be doing uh, any sort of mutate stuff, you want cards that are low to be able to mutate onto. You see, like, this thing mutates... Um, onto like a non human, so you want to control a non human to put it on. Um, capture sphere is real. I don't know how real that is. We can pick up that glimmer bell. That's flying. Fight as one is extremely strong. This is a very, very good combat trick that's going to blow you the hell out. Uh, Momentum Rumbler, if it attacks, uh, doesn't have first strike, give it first strike. Uh, forbidden French. Oh boy, we got the whole. I one, one red hated dinosaur, and then a one, one human, and then. 
Just went. So if we're on a cliffs, though, I kind of care about being able to cast spells here. And, like, full fixing is nice. I like the Momentum Rumbler, though. Another mechanic in here is... Jesus said, just what if it had something nonsense combined everything into the creatures? Maybe. Uh, if it attacks, it gets first strike. And then if it attacks, well, if it has first strike, it gains double strike. Uh, this set has a lot of counters that hand off, like, abilities. Yo, another Sprite Dragon. Let's get that going. Uh, we also got the Farfinder Fox. This is a nice card. It's a good card to mutate onto. Um, you know. Capture Sphere is pretty cool. This is the third Lord Draxus. We might get some of those back. Um, I'm happy to have like the Prowess deck going in here. I like the, the multiple Sprite Dragons. We need to get some Prowess cards to go with this. Um, tormenting Voices or Cathartic Reunion. They're sorry, Cathartic Reunion, not Tormenting Voice. Um, is going to be the, the, I think, the, the type we want like that. Our colors are hyper open. I think we can just pick like this too if we do that. Lord Draxus number four. Okay, no, I get it. Anticipate though. I kind of want some things like this to be able to pump this Sprite Dragon. I know that the Lordraxis mutates very easily, too. Might want to just pick that up because that's a powerful thing to have and pick up my removal. I think I'll go with that. Anticipate is something I feel like I can replace. Uh, Aegis Turtle. Fire Prophecy! Whoa! Yo, what a late pick! That's nice. I feel really good about our color combination. That's not like a, yo, these people are not picking this. What a... What in the heck? This is a, yo, our colors are open. This rules. Uh, Fire Prophecy is a two and a three damage creature kill spell. And yes, this is a big town uh, game. But this also has a fake cycling. You can bottom of deck. Um, now, this isn't a, this is, so here's the, the thing about drafting with people instead of robots. A lot of people are going to be playing, you can see the colors that are open. Like, you know, nobody really wants to be in white right now. So we get the the Nightmare Squirrel, um, the Helica Glider is here. And yes, that's the, the creature type on this card is Nightmare Squirrel. Okay, we get ourselves an Anticipate, good. Let's look at the card tap here. Mm, that's good. Now, are there all those Lordraxes not coming around? It looks like the Lordraxes got picked up, so we have somebody who's in our in this color combo. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and pick up the Pyroceratops. Actually, actually, this is a better. I think this might be more important. This is a better body to mutate onto. First strike is a lot better than this, I think. We need some bigger mutate cards. All right, let's go ahead and fill this out. Final picks. Cathartic reunions, a final last one. Yes. So the Lordraxus uh, is hybrid here. Ooh. Okay, Gigantha the Wellspring. Uh, companion means that you can have this on your sideboard, and if you meet the requirements, it's it is like a it's castable. So it starts outside of the game as a effectively like an EDH general, but without the recast. Um, no card in your starting deck has more than one of the same mana symbol in its mana cost. That works with everything except for our first pick, and I don't want to give up Yadaro. That would be very good without Yadaro. Um, Trumpeter Nar? This thing mutates pretty big. Um, makes a 3-3 beast on mutate. We wouldn't be able to play it as much of one mind. Ooh, that actually seems really good, maybe. Yeah, let's go with of one mind. Why am I getting double white? I'm getting double white somewhere, right? So ultimatums are in this set. Hello, welcome back, ultimatum. Here's the Jeskai ultimatum. Target player gains five life. Inspired ultimatum deals five damage to any target. Then you draw five cards. Uh, no, the, the way it means is that, like, see, the Inspired ultimatum has blue, blue in its cost. You can't double up on a mana symbol in a cost. You know what? Sure, this seems fun. I don't know if we'll be able to get it in here. I'd probably pick up the Lava Serpent or, like, Tigerilla here. 
That's literally the name of the card. It's Tigerilla, huh? Here's the cat of the set. Hello. Welcome to cat. This is our cat. Let's find some fixing. Okay, so white fixing is pretty important. Savai Crystal. It's pseudo white fixing. As long as there are three or more instances. Sorcery's in graveyard. And it's double strike. Wow. That seems real. Oh, shit. Also, check this out. This is, I mean, don't worry about the art. Um, but destroy target creature with no counters on it. This is a hella removal card. It's very, very strong. Uh, and if it fails, you can just remove the counters. I'm going to go ahead and pick up, I think, the uh, Spell Eater Wolverine. It might be a little hard for us to get, but like if we pick up some more removal, like Fire of Prophecy, that'll be cool. Uh, I don't really care too much about this. is a little too expensive for my taste at the moment. Our deck does not have like the ramp for me to want that. There's our great Mothra's Cocoon, which uh, is an O2 egg, and then it mutates for when it gets plus one. When it mutates, gets plus one, plus one counter. Uh, Vigilance counter, Valiant Rescuer. Probably pick up this Essence Scatter. Seems fine. Uh, there's a Flash theme in black blue, so this becomes a Bone Splitters that. Uh, this person's having a day. Check out that skull over there by the, um, by the teeth on the right. Ah, I gotta get you. Cloud Piercer, Dream... T okay, this is the kind of card I want to fi fix up the deck with. Um, Dream Tail Heron is a very, very strong mutate card for us. Uh, because, so the way mutate works is that if you cast this as the mutate cost, and we overlay it onto, say, Sprite Dragon... The Sprite Dragon will become a 3-4 flyer with all the text, or whichever one we put on top, we'll put this on top, and it'll trigger the Mutate of Draw Card. So this can be a 4-mana 3-4 flyer that draws a card to immediately replace itself. Uh, this card's sweet as hell. Uh, this card's Space Godzilla. We don't have Space Godzilla, but it is Space Godzilla, trust me. All right, Windscard Craig, you're talking. You're you've got high high hopes. Feel like that might be what we want if we're gonna get that ultimatum off. Uh, that means we're passing up Facet Reader, <laughs> like Zendikar, but Monster Hunter. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. It has the like, it, it's definitely the sort of adventure feel, but like rather than like a D and D, like traps and ruins, it's like yo, Space Godzilla's here. Naturalist is really good. I like this card. We're going to go ahead and try and get the ultimatum off. I don't care. If... Here we go. Raugard Crystal. That's nice. That's full fixing. Uh, we are passing up probably a Cloud Piercer for that, which is a bit of an annoyance, but not too bad. I feel like we can get this ultimatum going. That even ramps up to it. Uh, Mothra's Cocoon. Blitz. Ah, the Crustacean. This is a good Crystal Crab. I'm going to pick up this Blitz. I, don't... I think this is going to be like two damage on... That is recording three is very dumb. Yes, that card is incredible. Um, I don't know if this card's going to be good. Like, I don't know how many instant sorceries we're going to need for it to be strong, but I'm going to try it out. I think we're going to table one as well. Um, so every crystal... Evolving Wilds. All right, good, good, good. Let's keep fixing this up. Good. We can get that ultimatum going. Zenith Flare. That's not really us. Fro Tigerilla is fine. So Zenith Flare is an incredible card. I love this card. Uh, deals X damage where and you, it's a it's Helix, but Helix for cycling. Uh, the factions are the um, clans, effectively. Oh, the, oh look, auto select. Sure. Thanks, auto select. Let's see what auto select does here while I'm talking about this. Yeah, so the factions in this set are the wedges. The clans, I'd call this Jess guy. Uh, let's see what the auto pick does. Does yeah, it's fine. I agree. Pick up Mother Cocoon. Let's go ahead and finish this. I don't want to. There's a lot of ways of saying it's X, but Y, but you know, it, it, it's it's. I feel like it has its own feel. Oh, yeah. So as far as limited goes, uh, as far as con, like you know, like cons, we have these. We have literally the cons lands at common. Uh, we also have evolving wilds, and we have these crystals, which are 
instead of banners. Um, so the crystals have cycling instead of the f go from play. All right, final pick. Yeah! Oh, we are rolling in it today. Perfect, beautiful, excellent. How you doing? My name's Shark Typhoon. Uh, we got a sh our creature token shark with flying. You best be ready. So, the way Shark Typhoon works, if you cast it as a spell, uh, anytime you cast a non-creature spell, you prowess for an XX blue shark which is with flying where x is mana cost or you can cycle yes th th when i see this that's exactly what i think for squire as well uh but you can cycle it for an xx shark as well if you like top deck it and you just need a shark it's very good it's uncounterable that way we're gonna pick it up the fact that you can just cycle is fine Ooh, zero to the dawn walker i like this card a lot there's a swift lot of cliffs down there that's really big too um, also the Sanctuary Smasher is very strong. What else? So, we, so Zero to the Dawn Walker needs every card in your deck to have an activated ability to be able to be, like, playable as your companion. Um, which we're not going to be able to hit because, like, Sprite Dragon. Uh, but you can just play it. And it has activated abilities cost two less, which would make things like Cycling cost two less. Um, anything else in here we'd want? There's also the Dranith Stinger, which is a very good cycling thing. Um, kind of want the Sanctuary Smasher, though. This thing's huge. Uh, if the hey, third Sprite Dragon. Hell yeah. That's the kind of shit we want. Uh, yeah, it's a Sprite Dragon. That's like our game. Cycling is an ability. Yeah, so it makes cycling cost less. It does not make mutate, because mutate is a alternate mana cost on casting a spell, so it doesn't make that cost too less. But it would make the cycling on a shark typhoon cost less. But yeah, Sprite Dragon, let's get some more of that going on. Death's Oasis, Windscard Crag, how you doing? Well, unless there's like removal in this pack, I'm probably picking Windscard Crag. Um Yeah. Go for blood, creature fights. Ah, there is removal in this pack. Okay. Damn. That's good removal, too. Companion is like a, a fake EDH. I have a little bit of concern with it because I don't like powerful cards sitting outside of the game always castable. That seems very, very... tough to me. Yo, Clash of Titans. This is a one-mana discount on a spell from Innistrad. I believe. In a shot or Dark Ascension. Uh, Clash of Titans. Is Dark Creature fights on a target creature. You will notice. Um, this does not say you control. Uh, another Sprite Dragon, but I feel like I want more. I oh God, there's even a Rumbling on Rockslide. I want the Fire Prophecy in the deck, actually. That goes cheap with these. We're not, probably not going to table any of the other things I want out there. Frost Links, another Rumbling Rock Slide. All right, our colors are doing really well. This is perfect. This means we are we have chosen correctly. At least it isn't repeated game states like Commander. I realize that, but I don't like... Uh, I, I, like I, I have an issue where I feel like it's, it's, it's going to be an issue of like, wow, this card is always tutorable. How do I always have access to this? Uh, Dranith Stinger. We've got Rumbling Rock Slide. Again, another removal spell. Frost Links does well as well. I think I want more. Just I want more things to go with the Sprite Dragon. Yo, we can't play this ultimatum. A little too late. Thundermane, Pacifism, keep safe. This card's sweet. I want to draft a deck around this one. Savi Thundermane is sort of It's it's pseudo lightning rift. It doesn't go face. Pick that pacifism up. Yeah, but even Handed Golem doesn't start outside of your deck. That's the problem. Even Handed Golem literally is a is, is a card in your deck you have to draw. I, I think of it more like uh, Gren and uh, even Odd Odd and Hearthstone. Resonark, thank you very much for the sub. Obviously, it's nowhere near as powerful as those, but that's what I think of it as. I like the art on this one. It's good art. All right, we get Zero back. We get Reflexes back. We get another. Let's take Zero back here. We can't play. 
play it outside the deck, but we can play it in the deck. Um, Wins card, Craig. Thank you very much. Yes! Ooh, we're gonna... <laughs> Let them fight. <laughs> Let's do it. Uh, Frenzied Raptor. It's fine. This is a cantrip. It's not as good as you think it is. Uh, it does not tap it. It just says it doesn't want to tap. Alright. This is like a league where you play with people outside the pod. Yes. Alright, so first things first, what does our fixing look like? Right, we gotta go down here. We got Evolving Wilds, we've got Routing Crystal, we've got two Windsguard Crags. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, that'll be good. We can get double white off that. Mothra! Yes! When I when I make Godzilla jokes, I'm not like The Godzilla jokes are real. For those who haven't like who aren't like familiar with this set they literally did get permission and and worked like, like they, they 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 got you know permission and license and are using at godzilla there's there's 19 alternate art cards you can see this is still called mysterious egg up top um but like um this one here yadaro has an alternate art that is another godzilla There's there's some number of them. There's there's this Godzilla. There's a buy a box Godzilla. There's uh there's a baby Godzilla. There's, there's a lot. Anyway, we want the Sprite Dragon. Uh, we want the Swift Rock Clicks. We want the Lord Draxus. We want Yadaro. Uh, Rumble Porky Parrot seems cool. Uh, Fire Prophecy is gonna be real good for us. Dream Tail Heron, Shark Typhoon. Let's get those in there. Blue is a little less than what we want, but it looks like it'll be just fine. Mystic Subduel and Level 1 Mine are fine. Uh, this thing big. That's removal. That's removal. How are we doing on creatures? What do you look like, deck? Nine creatures. Alright, so what will we gotta add more of those. That'll be fine. Buy box. Hold on. Actually, okay, somebody said... Yeah, save and exit. That, that's fine. Oh my god. Save the deck. I'm trying to... Yes, save the deck, please. Um, so yeah, there's a buy a box that is a Godzilla, but can I craft it? And does it have non-Godzilla art? What is the name of it? Hell. Um, I don't remember the na actual name of it, so let's go... You, 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 mythic rare creature from Ikoria. Here it is. Yeah, it's just Godzilla, King of the Monsters. So it has a name, Zalortha, Strength Incarnate, but that card doesn't exist. It's just Godzilla. So... You might be able to guess what this one is if you're not aware what the big old uh, moth might be. Uh, this is also, in my mind, one of the most powerful cards in the set. Just easy. Anyway, let's get back to our draft. Um, I added in some creatures at random to finish this up. Were they okay? The yeah, Alan's good. The yeah, Alan's fine. I want, I want some more. We also might want the Blitz of the Raptor in here. And then... Two planes? That might be a little heavy, but we, if we want to actually cast it, we probably do want two planes. <coughs> um... Zerd is double red. It's a 3-3. Three, three. What does it actually do? It makes this cycle for one, this cycle for one, this cycle for two less. Cycle for one. Doesn't do a ton, it's just like a... Oh, mmm. Untap for one? That's nice.
So if this is in our deck, we don't have humans. But, like, this so this card won't cost one? Boo-hoo. Like, <laughs> this card already says draw two cards with three mana. It's just divination. So that's all the Sortami. You draw two cards with three mana. This card's ridiculous, by the way. Um, one mana draw two should always be looked at. Because one mana draw two is like, that's where I, you know, your eyes should be like, whoa, hold on. Hold on. Here, Mystic Subduel, that might be, okay. We're winning through Sprite Dragons. This is our victory condition, is this, this thing. So, <sighs> ape, beast, bird, cat, dino, dragon, elemental, fairy, jellyfish, lizard, rhino, turtle. Do I want two planes? I want to cast this. I feel like two planes is fine. We don't have a lot of doubles, that's one of the reasons. Oh, actually, this actually works on planes, hold on. But no, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want that as my companion. Thank you for asking, though. Still might want this Ferocious Tigerzilla, and oh, ooh, the Spell Eater Wolverine, shit. This thing's like an easy double striker in our deck. We should include that. Hmm. What did Don Walker do? So Don Walker, let me go ahead and... So it asks you if you want to set it as your companion. Now, companion is a new mechanic in the set that lets you... Let's say I say yes. You put it up here in the companion slot. Hi, it's got a little uh, paw on it. Um, the companion starts outside of your deck and is castable. Um, what Zerta does and asks for is that every card has an activated ability. And you can see in... Highlighted. Oh, that's nice. Highlighted in uh, orange here. This does not have an activated ability. This is not a permanent. This has no activated ability. This has no activated ability. This does. Cycling is an activated ability. This does not. Mutate is not an activated ability. It is a alternate spell cost. Shark Typhoon has an activated ability. So that's what this does. Is it sits outside of the game and is castable if you meet the condition. So it's a deck building restriction and it, it rewards you because like it wants all activated abilities and it makes them cheaper. That's always available. We're gonna be doing deck building with that later. So no, I don't, but I do wanna just play it. That's fine by me. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and cut out. Lord Drakes just looks really good in the deck now. And these are our win cons right here. That's generic enough. All right. I'm going to go with two planes. That way I will always have this double white and I can't over double white. Uh, it might, I might cause some problems up top, but like we only need single color restrictions. So that should be okay. All right. Let's go have some fun. We might not play, we're probably not going to play out this whole thing, by the way. Uh, I, I plan on doing some constructed as well here. So, uh, And then after this, after this WotC sponsored pre-release stream, we're still going to be doing Final Fantasy 13 too. So hopefully, if you're interested in that, you'll get to check that out. Ready? Do uh, we have an opponent? Do I have an opponent? There they are. Chaka, 1977, born in the year. Okay, this hand is actually fine. Uh, you might think to yourself, like, Chen says in two mana a little too li little. We got a play, we got Sprite Dragon on two, we got a removal spell that can cycle 
This is a weird cycling, by the way. It puts it on bottom of deck. Uh, could be quite strong. We can also mutate and then pick up our cycling. And we can, like, put, you know, one of these on bottom. Here's our new board. Okay, this is the new land set. Check this shit out. You, so you, you might be familiar with, like, Frontier Bivouac, which taps for all these colors and is uncommon. What if instead it had Cycling 3 and also was a Forest Island Mountain? It's incredible. Alright. We're going to do the beatdown. Hopefully they don't kill this. Then I just want them to make a play. Skull Prophet is here. Let's go ahead and... Yeah, new ability icons. They're down here. Skull Prophet is pretty rad. Taps for color or mills too. We're going to kill it though. Uh, I want a bottom of deck. Probably the right Pyroceratops at the moment. I kind of like having Clash of Titans. I don't know about Clash of Titans. That might... No, that might be fine. And then this cycles for first strike counter on that, which could be very useful. So we're going to go ahead and kill this. Uh, let's go ahead and put... I'm actually going to put Clash of the Titans on bottom. Because Clash of the Titans doesn't seem like it's going to be castable very much here. We're going to be killing most of the things our opponent is playing. Okay, they need to kill my Sprite Dragon. They can't kill it with the new Doom Blade. Okay, that's the 2 4 with Vigilance. That's fine. Uh, we can just go ahead and take that out with a Rumbly lock, Rock Slide and just keep on rolling. Or we can play a Pyroceratops. Also keep on rolling. I think we'll go ahead and play the Pyroceratops. This thing gets bigger when we prowess, so, you know. Okay, here's their fourth land. It comes to play tapped. It is also... Whoa! Cycling for Death Touch on that. That's power of Space Godzilla. No blocks, thank you very much. Alright, another Sprite Dragon. Let's go ahead and rumble some Rock Slide out. Music's a little overpowering here, I think. Is that the same for y'all? Anyway... We'll just, uh, get some of these out of the way. Okay, it's very quiet. That's fine. Yes, that's... I'll have to adjust some volume levels. If it's not audible on your end. Good, as long as it's there. Anyway, we're doing the beatdown. Our opponent has, a uh, four co... They might be playing this just as green, blue. Oh, Bristle Boar. I'm so sorry. Ooh, check this out. Alright, so what we're going to do, we're going to tap two, we're going to mutate, so it has the glowy, we're going to cast Lord Drakesis, targeting non-human, hi it's you, and then we choose the way we want it, we're either going to make it a sprite dragon with all the text, or a Lord Drakesis with all the text, and we want the Lord Drakesis because it keeps this power toughness, see? So you, you get the top power toughness, not the combined. So we're going to go over. And we're going to pick up Fire Prophecy. And we're going to cast Fire Prophecy. I'm going to decline. I like my hand. And then we're going to attack. So yeah, now this is a Lord Drakesis Mutated Sprite Dragon. Uh, it has all the text. Hello. Anyway, so that's how our deck wants to operate. I believe our opponent did play a second Triome there. Those are very strong. 
if you see them in limited, you probably want to pick them because they're probably going to be very useful for your constructed deck. Um, I'm going to be playing a ton of these, I guess, so that I can get my Godzilla on. Sure. Absolutely not. <laughs> As long as it's actually making it bigger. Anyway, I think that was the perfect distillation of our deck. I almost don't need to play more with this, but I want to see if we can get, like, a... Uh... Yudaro? Yeah, there we go. This looks fine. We can cycle Yudaro. That's first cycle. Hopefully we can find it more. Maybe Fire Prophecy cycling into it. Nice. All right, let's go ahead and leave up Fire Prophecy past the turn. I'm sad this is a Godzilla instead of a Gamera, because it's a big turtle. Anyway, Cycles goes into the deck. It shuffles in first before you draw the card. So we could draw it again. It's entirely possible. I'm going to not play this crystal. I'm going to pass without playing it. Kamara's owned by a different company. Oh, well, I did not know that. You learn something new. Alright, I'm a big thing here is I don't want to play this because I don't want to drop my counter stuff. And I also want to power up this py Pyroceratops with the crystal. So. Is that a puppet of Jace? Yeah, it's a puppet of Jace. Uh... Cool. Okay, that's just the Blossoming Sands. Uh, we want to go ahead and play out our Pyroceratops. We want to get this going as quick as possible. There's a King Kong like. Four or five there. This is a good one. Uh, it's good fixing. It's good mutate. Mutate makes this a lot more valuable than it normally would be. Um, we're going to play the cliffs. And then we're going to play our crystal. I'm going to leave up Essence Scatter here. Because they have six cards in hand. I don't want this to become something big. Anything that beats Pyroceratops, we're going to have to counter. Yo! Okay, so Titan's Nest here lets you burn... Gives your spells delve. That's, that's what this does. It gives your spells delve. At the beginning of your upkeep, the top card of your library you can put in the grave, and then you can exile cards in your library and you make mana to only spell cast on colored spells without X. Um a lot of cards in hand. Still want to leave up this essence scatter? Let's just play the 3-3 three, three then. Okay, we can... I think we can answer the pass... Wait, hmm, can we answer the pacifism? I don't know if we can. Okay, Evolving Wilds. It's fine. They have four colors, or is this just in here for... Alright, this is looking like it could be ultimate of mana. Be wary. Okay, let's... 
Let's Sprite Dragon and attack. We'll mutate this later. Yep, they're looking at their... Okay, that's fine. Becomes a 1-3 no text. Not a problem. Also, yeah, I guess they'll have their blue. That's fine. So I get in for two, pass the turn back. They get to look... Again, they get to uh, surveil at the beginning of their turn. Which is pretty strong. That lets them both fill their grave with, for this and, you know... Tranquil. Okay, they have five colors, huh? Oh boy. Yeah, this is five color flat. Oh shit. Oh shit. We need to kill our opponent now. Whenever you cast a spell, draw two cards at the end of your turn and discard your hand with the Titan's Nest? Okay. You got it, boss. I'm scared shitless. You're not resolving a big creature here, at least. It's baby Godzilla. Um... That's fine. That's dangerous. They're gonna... They're, they have three cards in hand, but they're gonna... Yeah, they're gonna deck, aren't they? That's... That's more likely. Alright, two attackers. Um... Then discard your hand. But discarding their hand powers the song. Shark Typhoon! We're gonna do that next turn, I think, because the Porky Parrot's way more useful for us right now. So we want to mutate this onto Sprite Dragon with it on top. So now I can tap for a damage. We're just going to get in with flying, leaving up Essence Scatter at the moment. Again, they get to scry one, and then do their thing, and then... So they draw a card, and then they're like, well, this card lets me draw two cards. And lets me spend my grave. Oh my god! Oh god, our opponent has assembled a machine! I forgot to make my monster grow, damn it. I'm sorry. That's a mistake by me. We'll get to it sooner or later. But I remember to make my monster grow. Uh, that's fine. I don't care about that. Sumasa, thank you very much for the sub. Okay. Land. Then they're gonna Titan's Nest to burn their grave. Yup. <laughs> this machine is incredible. This is a draft. That card doesn't matter, it's on the ground. I don't care about your ground army, I just care about flying. They can play two lands a turn because of this card. That's another one on the ground. Yep, they can draw two cards. Uh-huh. And then they discard their hand. They have 13 cards in deck. All right, let's go ahead and play a land. Let's go ahead and attack with Porky Parrot. And let's pass. We got a 5-5 five, five Shark if we need it. This is not active because it has no text. They get the Titan's Nest. Yeah, the hand discard's a lot better when you, you can use it to power your... Okay, hopefully they drew a land or something. Looks like... 
solid footing that lets things deal damage with their toughness if they have vigilance. Otherwise, it just gives plus one, plus one, and makes this a 3-3. Three, three. Sure. That's too big of a flyer. You can't have that. You still get a draw, too. And draw with Baby Godzilla. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, they're gonna deck. They're gonna deck. This isn't optional. You must draw two cards. They're gonna deck. Like, that's a non-optional... clause. Okay. Oh, that's a really good mutate. That lets them pick up an instant or sorcery. What do they got down here? Oh, they removed them all. That's actually not as good as it looks. Oh my god, is, is this not optional either? It's not optional. Oh, shit. They have four cards left in <laughs> Okay, let's... Mecha Godzilla, the weapon. I love Mecha Godzilla. Check this shit out. Okay, I have a thousand percent respect for my opponent. They are incredible. Um, sadly, the machine that draws infinite cards and produces infinite mana doesn't deal infinite damage. It's it, it's it's just there. <laughs> Whoops. Hi, Nathan. Our opponent has Titan's Nest and Song of Creation. This gives their spells Dells, and this makes their spells call draw to. Oh my God, that draws a card, my dude. Yeah, yeah, you can resolve that. Uh-huh. Yep. One card left in deck. Uh-huh. Their lands are like Island, Mountain, Tranquil Cove. I don't know. They have... No, we'll show the shark. I'm going to use it as a blocker. And then this mutates to draw a card. <laughs> If you cast a spell, you lose the game. God, our opponent. Sir Dally. Incredible. King. You know what? There's only one way to go out here. We make a shark. Oh. Incredible. Our... Our opponent assembled a machine. That machine drew infinite cards, made infinite mana in a limited deck. It just forgot to kill the opponent. Beautiful. 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 You need, like... Like... Incredible. You, you, you have my respect. Let's go a little bit longer here. We've gotten to do most of what this deck wants to do, uh, and then we'll do some constructed. I'm so glad we're doing the limited though, because holy crap, this entire stream has <laughs> been good just based on that. I want to cast that ultimatum if I can. It looks sweet. We got plays. We got removal. It was a good hand. Uh, Fire prophecy is real sweet. It lets me cycle if things get bad. I like, and then. These are both playable. Rumbling Oxide is good removal. Let's keep it. Consider that deck with the like, Thassa's Oracle. That might be a constructed deck. You got an Opt? What do you got here? Opt? Oh, one mana Cycler. You got a one mana Cycler. Boon of the Wish Giver. Good card. Sure. Let's go ahead and go and get that Glimmer Bell going.
Ah, no blocks. You can have that. I think there's a plus two, plus two trick. I had fallen for it. Um, Spell Eater Wolverine. I also got Zerta here and Fire Prophecy and Rumbling Rock Slide. These are, so one thing that's cool here, these are both humans, I don't have to worry about mutates. So I just get to note that I don't have to worry about mutates because these are both humans. You cannot mutate onto a human. It's, okay, so it's kind of funky. I don't quite spend your trick, dude. Okay, hold on. Whoa! One mana draw two! Yeah. So, like, th they said, like, they kept repeating it a lot of times, like, mutate is for non humans because the, the, the tropes we're going for, there's no such thing as humans turning into big monsters. And it's like, but. But aren't there? Like, <laughs> that, that seems off to me. I don't know. Like, Sometimes, like, that's, humans are the monsters is a pretty big thing. I don't know. I, I, I don't quite... Anyway, you want to essence scatter my Zerta, please? It's fine by me. I did it before I... Alright. We're going to go and play Mountain so that we can cycle this. <laughs> you know when a wizard's watch his rider? Yeah. Look. It's not just that, though. He was becoming monsters was Innistrad as a block. Yeah, that's the... Sure. Fine by me, I don't care for that. Let's have that. We need to cycle Yadaro. I do, I, I do see what you mean about, like, the preferring the flavor. That makes sense. But, like, I just... It's such an odd restriction. At least the set goes deep into the human, non-human stuff. Like, that actually is enough of a, like, mechanic that works. Okay, I'm gonna enter the battlefield, make a 1-1. One, one. Okay, sure. Hi, I'm cycling. Sweet. Uh, let's go ahead and make my monster grow. Um, we're gonna go ahead and... Cast this. Bottom of deck the Swiftwater Cliffs. Yeah, there we go. So I'm not going to be able to cycle this this turn because I need to do this, but that's okay. Um, we want to mutate here. Bigger. Take my monster! Oh, um, gain one power! Yeah! It got slightly bigger. We don't actually need the whole Megazord. You can just probably summon, like, Sabertooth Tiger and take care of it. It's okay. It's fine. Anyway, we got a Fire Prophecy back. <laughs> You're right, they might just like put all their weapons together and shoot it. That's probably easier. You know what I mean? All the We got cat. This thing flies, so you know, it's fine. Um We're gonna take some damage. Are they taking with the checkpoint officer? They are. Okay. Funnily enough, they can't use checkpoint officer to tap down this. It just doesn't work. Okay, they're just gonna flood the board, that's fine. We're gonna go ahead and... Damn, that's close. Um, let's go ahead and cycle this to start the turn. Might inform my choices a little better. Okay. Um, I'm gonna... We're gonna decline the cycle on that. And we'll attack. This leaves up Shark for one, and it leaves up on Tap Drake. Yeah, but I'm not blocked. 
block him. But this is just a threat. I'm not actually doing anything with this. Sorry, I lied to you. I don't want to lose the Lord Drake sister quite yet. Or snare tacticians. You got it, boss. Um, oh, that's making my monster grow. I think I can win next turn if I do that. Sure, that's fine. Two cards in hand. Let's get that trick out of their hand. Oh, okay. Good, good. So, you might think, wow, Jens, did we just lose the game? And the answer is no. <laughs> Make my monster grow! <laughs> That's where we throw down the spear and all of a sudden, like, all of Angel Grove's warehouse district implodes. <sighs> <laughs> warehouse district is, is where all the work in the town goes. Um, the dragon's really good, I like it with the sweet card. Mutate, yeah, because Sprite Dragon is like a really good mutate target, and it's also like secret damage. And mutate is also secret damage, you know? Like all of a sudden, whoop, I'm three power. It's, it's cool. Um, we're not getting that ultimatum, are we? We can do one more. Respect for our opponent, they had a really cool deck too. The, the Trumpet Blast that they had has cycling as well. It's five mana. It's very expensive, but it has cycling, so. Uh, we almost got our... We almost lived the dream with... Uh, Yodaro. One mana cycle on Yodaro is pretty cool. What's your favorite making monsters large thing? Uh, hmm. I mean, the, the throw down the staff classic is just, is, is, is such a strong one. Ooh. I think we're on our first mulligan. This is so close to a good hand, too. Um, basically, if Clash of Titans didn't exist, it's so cheap, but, like, we can't keep on this. I don't, I'm not willing to risk that far down. I am willing to do this, though. This looks nice. Probably just put an island down. We got a bunch of mana and a bunch of cards. Let's keep this six. Got some lands. Got some wolverines. Got some dodge striders to make this cycle for one. Whoa! Check out this piece of... This piece of work. Oh, fiend Artisan. Fiend Artisan gets plus almost one for each creature in your graveyard, and then it has a fake birthing pot attached to it. Um, I 
pay X, sack a creature, search for X. It's not like search for, oh boy. Cycling to make that fiend artisan grow. All right, strong moves. Let's go ahead and... We're gonna do that so I can rock slide it next turn. I realize that's dumb, but I feel like they're going pretty hefty on this card. I want it dead. second white source. Blasted. Okay. Excavation Mole. What a cool card. Check out this 3 man 3-3. Three, three. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and play Sprite Dragon. And spell liker. Grave, far finder, unexpected fangs, plus one plus one on a lifeline counter. That's a real nice trick. Blood curdle, give this menace. All right, looks like we're gonna have to pick up our removal to kill that. Shark typhoon. Go ahead and lure Drake's this as we like to do. Make my monster grow! And we get a rock slide back. This this card has been. We passed three of these. This card's real strong. Death Touch or a lifelink counter. They probably get the Death Touch one. Yep, there's that skull. Blood Curl, make another kill. Alright, they're gonna menace that Death Toucher as well. Fine by me. I think we're going to go ahead and attack first. And let's go ahead and get this off the table. Final card in hand is a mutate. Ooh, that's a go good mutate. Each opponent discards a card. Let's go ahead and cycle this. Come. Okay. So that makes that a 4 4 Death Touch Menacer. Um. We're just gonna race. Hope you're ready. Cycle did not count. I just cycled it because I wanted the the I wanted to see if I had a better card to discard. It doesn't count as like it counts as discard, but it doesn't count as the discard from that effect. I had to discard the of one mind. Okay, let's go to four and I think X is six. Five. So this makes our cycling cost two less. <laughs> All right, um... We're just gonna go ahead and play Porky Parrot and pass the turn. Well, then next turn, this will will end the game. I think. I have to leave. Like this has way too many. Like if they have one kill spell, I don't want them to just be able to walk in. This is huge. That is the game in a nutshell, right there. Holy shit. Make my monster! Hmm. Make my monster! Okay, I'm 
holding a counter spell for blockers. Looks like they probably are out here. It's funny that me drawing the life gain land, I think, is enough to end this. Because all of a sudden they can't attack for lethal anymore. Okay, you might think, like, Jones, do you want a double block? And the answer is, this board is complex and strange and weird. I'm like, why am I trading two for one? And the answer is... Who said anything about trading? <laughs> it's a secret porky parrot under there. <laughs> that first strike counter I cycled a thousand years ago. <sighs> that, that game was over right there. They were they were dead to the uh, crackback, but I I feel good about that. You can hide your you can hide your onboard tricks. Wow. Okay. One thing I'll say about this set: the mutate I think is going to lead to board states that almost resemble kind of a Lorwyn level amount of text on cards. Uh, I don't know if it's going to actually hit that level. Lorwyn's a way a really high bar, but there's a lot of stuff going on, and, like, cards are going to get really confusing really fast. I still haven't even... Uh, we can't ultimate them. Do I have to keep going? Into, all right, what, what do people feel? Do we, should we move on our constructor, or should we keep trying for that ultimatum? How y'all feeling? Do you think we got enough out of this draft deck? I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm going to... For those watching the VOD, I'm asking the chat to see where we want to go. And if you're in the VOD, I'm, I'm sorry you don't get a... a, a you don't get a... a a say in this one. Um, got a couple don't cares. Champion, yeah. 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 Alright. I got a bunch of people that are like, meh, I don't care. And then a bunch of like, let's do some constructed. So let's leave this off. Maybe we'll finish with this. We'll come back. That might be what we're up to. VOD watchers do matter. They're real. I respect everybody on the watch. All right, let's go have some fun. Oh, uh, first deck. I know what my first deck is. It's going to be dumb. Um, first things first. Uh, Winota, how you doing? You might even think, like, wow, why, why do I have to craft the cards? Okay. This is where we're starting. This is the starting point of the first deck I want to play tonight. Winota, join our forces. Whenever a non-human you control attacks, pull the top six cards of your library. You may put a human in your play, tapped, attacking, and indestructible. A couple things about this card. One, uh, that's not a, like, whenever one or more trigger. So, that triggers individually. Two, you might think non-human might be a little, like, difficult to be like, oh, where the hell am I getting get non-humans if I'm building, like, a human tribal deck? You be surprised um but and three well chance what are the payoffs what are we doing we're, we're, we're gonna make a human what are those those are dinky those are garbage right if i if i search human in here wow i get a one mana one one wow you get a cool one mana one one no text that's incredible like what are you doing well let's uh how about we go up to the top here and uh I don't know, let's let's go CMC like up here. And take a look at some humans. I don't know. We got like Sir Allen. Um I don't know, we got Agent of Treachery. That one's pretty cool, right? That's a good human. Right? That's a pretty good human to have show up on top of your deck. Um Scholar of the Ages is a different way to build the deck. That's a pretty good human, you know. To cast for free, for nothing. Conrad's a good human. Um, the other one I want in here is uh, Elite Guard Mage. That's a good, pretty good human. 
Yeah, you know, I got some stuff. Uh, Drew Fire Captain. I gotta go to crafting for the other ones I want. Hmm, Kenrith, you're a good human. You're a pretty good human. That's a big human. Hmm. I don't know how many big humans I want. Hmm. Okay, what about a human who makes non-humans? You know, just in case. Uh, what else? I know who I'm looking for. I'm looking for... Okay, well, that ain't a human. That's a, that's an ape. You can't fool me. That's an ape. This is the King Kong card. It's not King Kong, because Universal is not Toho, but... Yeah, those... There are a lot of knight tokens without human on them. Also, I just want you to appreciate the wolf bear. Uh, Elite Guard Mage is the other human I want in the deck. Or, sorry, is the other human I want in the deck, but there's one other I'm going to grab in multicolor, and that is... Hoktos. Wow, you're a human? Check out this human. That's maybe a little bit greedy on colors. I don't know if we're, if we're able to get that far, but, you know, that's a human. Uh, Sir Gwyn, this is a card from a Brawl deck, but it's real. Anyway, this is what we want in the deck. We want Hoktos. Hoktos is are, are uh, definitely not Achilles. Comes into play and has a protection from a number. Uh, protection from anything but that number. And so we're going to go ahead and, you know, use that. It's an Hoktos. We'll put two in. I think that's a little bit enough on the top end. All right. Step two. What are we doing on our low end? Yes, Sir Gwyn. <laughs> so, low end, we do need cards. And so, I'm going to start looking for a couple specific humans I want. Hmm. What if a human who becomes a non-human? Well, okay. Okay. What if, um, what if human with mentor, what if, you know, what if, but then we need small non-humans, and so there's a couple cards I'm looking for there, we're going to go ahead and search for the word token, um, the one I think is most notable for our deck here is raise the alarm. This is a card printed in um, Mirrodin. It's been reprinted like a thousand times. Uh, since it was in Mirrodin, it was just soldiers. Pretty sure it was Mirrodin this was in. Anyway, those aren't humans. Well, hey, that actually seems like a cool non-human. Um, we're going to look for tokens. Hmm. Two red elementals. That seems cool. Legion War Boss. You make some goblins. That's pretty good. Um, where else? Oh, this human. Yeah, make some soldiers. You know. Let's go into crafting and see what we can find in there as well. Hmm. What if... Demigod... You know... Human. Oh wow, you can't even see it. You, you, you can't see that, it's just Demigod there. Um, then we need some cards on the low end. Um, it's 
That's a good non-human on one. Life's bounty is a good one. A lot of cats, not in black. We could be in black though, because not a human. Sure, grim initiate. Okay, um, I think that'll be fine. The only one I don't like in here, and then I'm just gonna cut some numbers down. We only need, we don't need as many of those. I'm gonna take out the Tajiks, and then we're going to actually add in one more card. Treachery. Let's have fun with that. Um, and then we're going to cut out all the Sky Knights. Alright. And then our. Then we need. Triome. Uh, I think in three colors. Like, I could do this two colors and it'd be a little easier to put that land in. But, like, with three. I'm probably just gonna go like without um, Sacred Foundry. Um, Steam Vents. And do we want how many, how many blue sources do we actually want? Do I need do I need Hollow Fountains as well? Go like two and two, and then Temple of Triumph. Let's go have some fun with this. Um, actually, okay, cool. Let's go have some fun. See, we got a couple of, like, so the idea here is that Winota is a very powerful card, and I want to see how it plays in different, in this shell. I feel like there's a lot of different directions for Winota. Just Boros, uh, Black Splash, Blue Splash, a couple other things like that. Um, so we'll see how that plays. I see Winota, I see two drops. This should be fine. I just need to drop two layouts. Easy. That's loud. Okay, Temple. How you doing? Okay. 
try. Completely fine attacking there because no paradise drew in the world. He is block. All right, do we draw an untapped land? It's fearing. Oh, it's a diamond idiot. Trust me, I have a plan. That's fine. Chandra? I didn't even think about that. Let's cast the Razi Alarm now. I'm just like, yeah, yeah, I'll let the card resolve, then do my Razi Alarm. That's Don't make another move. Okay, so Teferi has to die to do the thing. I'm a little leery of a wrath coming down in mid combat now. I'll protect you. That's a bit of a pain in the ass. Um, on that, I kind of don't want to cast a uh, Winota here. Damn, I should have. That's that's uh, it's the wrath. The wrath shatter, right? See what happens. I assume we're just getting wrath before combat. Oh, weird! Shatter the sky. Go figure. Yeah. This might be a bad idea. All right. Well, we had the combo, and then it didn't really work out. Uh, let's go play Chandra. Monastery full of firebrands? <laughs> it's awesome. Say hi to my fiery friends. Okay. Luckily, our deck seems to have a long game. That's fine. Oh my god. Please. Now. Yep. Here we go. Not fail. Behold, nature's true power. Yeah, all right. Let's let's move along. That's 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 fine. I understand what your deck is doing. Uh, <laughs> I see Nissa and like, I'm 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 out. Well, well, you that, that's fine by me. I like the uh, so that the one card they the, the newer card they played the ramp double ramp and growth is really goddamn good. Um, it's it's green three starts for two basics. Hell yeah, this looks sweet. Um, green three. Uh, oh sweet, having to raise the alarms, nice. Okay. Ooh, oh, we're doing some clover things. All right. I like clover things. Um, probably just play that tide finger. I think there's some neat stuff you can do with clover things. All right, let's let's go tide taker. So Clover is a deck that improves a lot with just the existence of a Triome, but there's also, like, some... The thing they could be doing, which I'm guessing would be interesting, would be Song, that four-man enchantment we saw that lets you draw two cards and then discard your hand, because it works super well with adventures. Like, your adventures hide out of your hand. So Afterlife 1, that's perfect. A-plus would Afterlife again. Uh, we kind of want to draw Winota, but I'm going to go ahead and... Legion War Boss here. They missed a land drop. But no, I think that there's a lot of additional stuff here that's pretty cool. Again, the Song is a really, really strong teamer card. 
Because we saw him that limited. Yeah, that looks like what they're doing. Let's take a look at that grave. Parcel beast? Yep. Okay. It's a cheap mutate onto their merfolk secret keeper. Works well. Probably gonna play that merfolk secret keeper. Just as a blocker here, because it'll be a pretty effective one. No. Yeah, okay. That'll be next turn, huh? Okay, we're gonna raise the alarm and then, and then step. Yeah, you have the flyer gonna counter. What you got, buddy? Sure, fine by me. You get a double bounce. The Brazen Borrower being used is good enough for me. So smartly, they waited until I targeted. I'll recast. I think that's stronger than the Raise the Alarm. Alright, so if they don't sweep here, we're in a really, really good position. Like, if they just go, like, Bone Crusher, Merfolk, Secret Keeper, or something like that, it's like, go. Like, if they keep up a Brazen Borrower... There we go. So check this out, see? Parcel Beast mutates on there. It's real cheap. Uh, anyway, here we go. Are you ready, folks? <laughs> Four Goblins attack. Four triggers. Ah, uh, yeah, we're gonna target that. Uh, yeah, I like Elite Guard Mage. Yeah, I like Tide Taker. Oh, yeah, I like Agent of Treasure. Yeah, I like Actos. <laughs> Alright, that's the deck, everybody. That's it. That, that, that's the entire point of the deck. It's just... <laughs> like, I, I just want you to be aware of how powerful Winota is. Like, you might read Winota and be like, oh, you know, like, whatever, that's not too much. But this, this is what Winota does. So, no, I think we're good. I don't think I need to show that deck off anymore. Let's move on. <laughs> All right, um... <laughs> Next up, um... Unpredictable cyclone. So you check this out. If a cycling ability or another non-land would cause you to draw a card instead of exiling cards instead of a library, you cast the spell. So the way this works, this has a lot of text. Um, when you cycle a card, rather than drawing the card, you find a card that shares a card type with whatever you cycled away and cast it. Ooh, Lazav and Tetsuko. Ooh, that's that's a good combo. Tectonic Rex. Let's make a crystal. That's fine. Um. This triumph's good. Ultimatum. Yeah, that's good. Oh yeah, this is a wizard sponsored account. This is my fake account that I've had for like a year with wizards on my uh, that just has all these cards. <laughs> Um, 
Get two other bricks. Uh, cycling. Boon of the Wish Giver X4. Teutonic Rex X4. Trium X4. Crystal X4. Growth Spiral X4 because I want ramp that doesn't that isn't on the sorceries, so it copies the effect. Now well, let's go ahead and craft all there. Yep, that's fine. Um, how we doing? That's a standard deck. One more card. Hmm. I don't think we need that many shark typhoons. That might be overkill. Still, it's fine. Mm. Let's take a look at cycling again. Maybe. The companion's going in the deck. That's that's already a I I guess I should make that a more more explicit. The uh cycling like a companion fits in here. I don't want to craft it now. So the way this thing works is it's each permanent and your deck has to have an activated ability, so Growth Spiral and Genesis Ultimatum are fine. You have to note some of these. So, you, this is important. The, the Companions are not a... Oh, wow. That's... The Companions are not a... Um... Uh, uh a, 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 God, sorry. Brain, brain, brain. They don't all have the same conditions. So this one looks at permanence. This one looks at permanence. This one looks at non-land cards. This one looks at, uh, cards with CMC3 or greater. This one looks at creatures. So you need to be aware that, like, when you're building Karuga, this actually cares about your instants and sorceries. When you're building this, this doesn't. When you're building Luris, Luris doesn't. That's why Luris is busted. Every, like, this card's kind of strong. You might wonder, like, well, Chance, how's that really good? Uh, here's how that card's really good. There's a card called Emery, right? Emery has tap, let you cast an artifact from your grave. That's cool. Luris. Luris doesn't tap for that. Luris just, this cat lets you cast permanence from your grave. Two CMC or less instead of artifact. And like, oh, well, what's that do? Oh, you can get cast cat. That's cute. I don't know. What, what about Black Lotus? That's a permanent with two CMC or less. I like that permanent. Yeah, I like Black Lotus. Let's cast that every turn for free. Also, Luris gets to start outside my deck. That's why I think companions are a bit of a scary bit. Because, like, you always have Lurus in your opening hand. It's always there, and then if you're playing, like, a vintage, and it's like, oh, I'll just Lotus, Lurus, get back my Lotus, go. Whatever. Anyway, we need a little bit more for this deck. What are we doing to finish this off? Um, we need to not die. How are we doing that? How about that? I think our last card just needs to be... Target player doesn't lose the game, right? Well, that sweeper I played in limited earlier. Yeah, you. Makes this a little worse. Hmm. 
The Storm's Wrath makes my cycling for sorceries worse. So I think we want a sweeper that's an instant. Get out. Get out of here. So that leaves me with um, the yeah, flame sweep or just a burn spell? Damage. Yeah, probably. Probably just flame sweep. That might not be enough, but it's gotta have to be. All right, let's try this out. Um, temple. Not collected. Yeah, right there. Is that okay? Um, and then Tryland was the first card I put in the deck. <laughs> All right. Ah, this is it. These are so powerful. All right, let's have fun with this. Uh, we need to not die. We need to ramp and not die. We need to cast like this or Shark Typhoon, and then hopefully we don't die. This deck is a lot going to have a lot of die. All right. This deck is not going to be super competitive, but it'll be a lot of fun. So, that's what we're going to do. After this, I'm going to build one more deck I've got in mind. It's around the five-color companion. Um, and then, after that, we are going to uh, move on to just stuff other people have talked about. So, I'm excited. Kawakawa, all right, my friend. What do you got? Fire Fist. It's a strong style. Um, yeah, I like the sweeper ramp. Maybe we just cast that ultimatum. Who knows? Let's lead to the Triumph. Uh, I can't cast that. Pay to life. And pass the turn. All right. We got Zerda. Zerda's a freebie. Oh boy. Alright, how mirror match are we right now? How many levels of mirror match are we on? Yeah, you have to show this. This is visible. Public information. Zerda is known. Give me that crystal. Sure. Opt. Opt is something we could have played. It's like starting to get to play Zerta. They're opting. We're ramping. They're not. That's good news. wonder what they are. are they? They're four color. Oh, boy. All right. Let's go ahead and play Zerta. Hello, we're going to 
gonna cycle you for one. There we go, that's what I wanted. So the reason I cycled that instead of waiting to cast it is because next turn I can just ultimate him. And if they can't counter the ultimatum, then I cast another ultimatum. Like... <laughs> turn five, ultimatum, let's go. Please tap out. Oh shit. Yeah, all right. Song of creation, everybody. Oh no! Oh shit! Oh god! Oh, this is danger mode. Oh, our opponent's in hyper danger mode. They're gonna cast a bunch of zero cost spells. They're Cheerios. Yeah, still coil for zero. Draw two. They want to draw another land. Total field deed draws two cards. Another total field deed, another two cards. When they untap, this is gonna be hell. Another total field deed, another two cards. Why are they going so deep here? They just need one more land. No, they play their land for turn. They, they have to end, right? Like, what's their payoff? Oh, no, their payoff is Delve. Shit. Okay, then I gotta discard their hand. So they milled. Here it is, everybody. Here's the deck. They're probably playing an Underworld Breach to win the game, yeah. They have to top deck it, though. Anyway. So they do have this to start off their combo turn. Like, they have a Merchant of the Veil, so they can tap three and start moving. Uh, they can pick this up for five, but they don't have a white. So this, if they drew a land, they have to use the Merchant to start their combo. These are really good in there, by the way. That's This is a hell of a deck. Okay, we said our deck might not be, like, a real deck, because it's kind of dumb and silly. This card. Oh, shit. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Hmm. Play it out. Yeah, Rose Thorn Acolyte is another card that fits on the side for that. This is so good. This card here, again, this card is scary. This card is scary strong. When you cast a spell, draw two cards. It's a line of text. Yep. Draw some more cards. You got some more cards. 27 left in deck. Rose Thorn Acolyte to go filter a mana, draw two cards. That's also free, by the way. That costs nothing. They just keep filtering into green. I could see that, yes, Verdant Squire. This is a deck that is powerful enough to be a real combo deck. Obviously, it ha it like, you know, it, if you folds to a couple different pieces of hate, but, oh God, another zero. Look at how many pogs it has. Like, it has 12x pogs. It's, the reason this deck is fragile is that without Song of Creation, the deck does nothing, right? So if they don't draw their win, this card, they're not doing anything, right? Like, they're, they're, they're just... They're just not... like So when you have a deck that really is dependent on one card like this, you have to be able to find it. Uh... Now, that said, 
We have Merchant of the Veil, we have, um, not Aether Gust, we have Opt, we have Cycling, we have Temples, we have a lot of ways to search our deck. So, there's a lot of ways to find that card or filter to it. Leyline of the Void, yeah, it needs its grave. like... The Forever Young part of it, yeah, the, the, their hand is... Look at this, I, I can do some wiggling up here. Growth Spiral, play a land, and now they have double blue up. How many cards left in deck? Four. Thassa's Oracle, draw them two cards, and then it has Devotion to three, and that's the game, folks. Thassa's Oracle wins you the game. <laughs> so when does our opponent play the card that kills you? Uh. <laughs> yep. You can't kill the Thassa's Oracle on the trigger on the stack if they have an empty deck, because the song will be enough Devotion for it. It also works on greater than or equal to, so if they're on an empty deck, they still win. So, like, you can't just kill the Thassa's Oracle on the stack. It's kind of dumb. Anyway. That deck is also weak to, like, extraction-style effects, because if you lose your Thassa's Oracle, you're not winning that game. Anyway, it is a deck that is super rad. Uh, let's go ahead and run more or in with this and see where, where this goes. We did almost win the game. We cast a, so we cast a turn five ultimatum and our opponent went, that's nice, and then played their entire deck. So we kind of got showed up, all right? Little, 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 little bit, little bit. We, we little bit got showed up. It's fine. All right, human token 85, who is not a VIP. Born in the year 1985. This looks fine. Let's keep this. I feel like that's a super cool deck. Like, that's a deck that's going to continue to, like, see upgrades, you know? Like, people are going to find better and better ways of, you know, uh, how many how many cards do I play in this that are, like, you know, X, Y, Z. Uh, we need a pretty pool on tap to pay two life, pass the turn. Oh, the beatdown, huh? All right. What'd you rob? Um. Let's play a 3-3. Three, three. <laughs> let's, let's, let's get a body on the board. This forces some sort of removal out of our opponent. Wonder a flame sweep. Or just untap. Untapping with unpredictability cyclone will be just fine. Yo! All right. Whenever this mutates, destroy target artifact or enchantment. Wow. I'm right there with you, gnome. Like I, 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 I don't get why this card has a defensive ability. 
this is not a defensive card. Hell, this actually just came up on Ryan's stream like two hours ago, where he ran his 2-2 into that, and it was just like, why the fuck does this card have reach? Uh, I'm passing. Oh, you're okay with it. Okay, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, then I just... I'm, I'm not there with you, then. My apologies. Uh, yeah, uh, like, X is five. Yeah. <laughs> A little giant ass shark showed up. Fuck you. Oh, that's so good. Um. All right, let's um. Black Lodger's an elf. <laughs> Temple, show me what's up. So, uh, we got a lot of big creatures showing up on our next turn, just out of nowhere. I'm gonna be blocking with Zerda on a 2-2. Two -two. I don't want it to die, but I'm okay with it dying. Okay, shit, that's... Do they have two points of haste? That's nine. If they've got two points of haste or pump, I'm dead here. Okay, everything's fine. Let's go ahead and start cycling. Titanic Rex. Hmm. Yeah. Sadly, uh, this card is legendary. We can't make three of them. I was, I needed to like get my other. Um... I think we might need another creature in this deck for it to work. One more big cycling creature? We might need one more big cycling creature. Let's go ahead and take one more look at the deck. Because, like, that that showed me that, like... You know, I still want the flame sweeps because they're really good. Um... Let's... Alright, let's go cycle. Let's... That's way too small. Could be okay. It's probably that. Alright, what do we cut out? Where do we trim this? No, we don't you reduce Yudaros. That's that's not it. Because we want more Yudaros to be able to free Yudaro. 
I like Yadaro in here. I don't think that's... That, I, I disagree with lowering that. Because, like, the free... Like, say we don't get Unpredictability Cyclone, Yadaro is one of our better, like, creatures we just get to hit for free. Um... I'll just go no fear. Whatever, this is a dumb deck. If you're building this deck for, like, actual competitive... Lava Serpent is another choice. It was the other one I looked at that could be a, a better one. If I'm, but I, I really... I didn't... It wasn't, like, surprise damage that I wanted there. That wouldn't have been enough. I just needed a board. Disorganized Wizard Club. All right. Sure. Cool. I'm in. This looks dumb as hell. I want to leave one boon of the Wish Giver in my hand. Oh boy. Okay, I'm noticing this deck does very poorly without its ramp because it's way too expensive. Hmm. Fire Prophecy. Get a crystal. I think we're dead next turn. When Ota comes down and we die. Is that how this works? Come on, do it. When Ota. so much. Look at it. It's so cute. Kenrith, all right. Alright, I feel like this deck is nowhere near as, as powerful as, as other decks based around high-cost enchantments are. One of the problems is that you have to, like, really... You can't have the best ramp in the format, because you have to, like, set up your sorceries and creatures. And that's a bit of a pain. I like Shark Typhoon, though. That's what I... What I found out from playing this deck, because even if it doesn't work out, I found out that... I freaking love Shark Typhoon, and Zerda's quite good with it. All right, let's go ahead and move to next, the next plan. And the next plan is... Yeah, Minu, Loyal Companion. Give me that. All right. What's up? How you doing? Come. Okay. Perfect mana base. I don't know. No, I'm not doing a Shark Typhoon deck. We already did a Shark Typhoon deck in Limited, and the last, like, I already did two of those. That's, that's too much. <laughs> All right. Um, what we want here? Huh. Huh, this is this is this is gonna be. 
separate question. So we can't have double costs. So, like, we're in a weird way where, like, so we can't use, like, there it is. So the filter here, the companion filter, if it's on, just won't show you illegal cards. That's what that's doing, by the way. So because I have a companion on, it's just not showing me illegal cards. So... I think we're looking for... the name of the card um do I just not have definite clarions is that why that wasn't showing up there they are so definite clarion that's gonna be our our sweeper we're gonna be the jerk with the fairy um I'm just pulling these numbers out of my ass, don't... If you're wondering where these numbers are coming from, nowhere. Okay, Uro, put a couple of you in. Just two, we don't need a bunch. So Niv, this is the card we're kind of building around. What Niv does, Niv reveals the top ten cards in your library, and then for each color pair, you can pick a card and put that in your hand. So, like... You could grab one Simic card, one Boros card, one Azorius card, etc., and put them all in your hand. So, we kind of want to have a lot of different options available to us. We don't have to, like, our... The duels, we actually have an easier way around it, because, like, the Triomes and Steam Vents and... Oh, um... So I'm going to treat this as I would a, um, damn it, I spelled it wrong, Arbor, there we go, I think the other one I want is Beanstalk, okay, so that'll be enough, like, it might be too much basic fixing. Let's take a little more beanstalk. Generic mana is colorless. Like, like, or sorry, is 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 the four. It's not colorless. Got it. It's it's. It used to be a colorless requirement. So like, the and on Gigantha it is it is red green hybrid and four generic mana. So. You cannot cast Gigantha off of tapping Gigantha. You can only use the green on it. However, you could just cast Niv off of tapping Gigantha. Um, all right, so let's go color combos. I want one card in every color combo. Assassin's Trophy. Lucranos. Let's go with Assassin's Trophy. Celestia. Night of Autumn will be our Celestia card. Orzov. I 
So we can't casualties a war with Gigantha, and that's maybe one of the bigger losses with Gigantha. Because Gigantha's uh, condition is you cannot have uh, more than one of the same mana symbol and its mana cost, and casualties of war is green, green, black, black. So we can't use that because it has double green, which breaks the rule. Mary of Definite Clarion, we're good there. Um, Simic is fine. What do you want? We're just a row? Why are these different cards? Oh, I guess that was in a different thing. And that, and that. Need a Rakdos card. Yeah, let's take an Angrass Rampage. Then we need a Gruel card. Gruel's gonna be a harder one to grab because, like, we gotta find a Gruel card. Oh, well, we have a Gruel card. It's Gigantha, but it's not in the deck. Gruel doesn't have things that are super great for this specific idea because obviously Gruel is a. We don't really need to protect Gigantha as much as Gigantha's a extra way for us to get the mana that our deck has. I don't think it's necessary for us to be, like, super protective. Oh, let's put the Goloses on. I'm gonna go with Clothis, I think. That'll be the most interesting. Alright, and then... Can. Oh. Right. Should probably want growth spiral over um being stock now that I'm thinking about it. I like growth spiral better. Um okay. And we just need Couple more cards to fill this out. So we can find some finishers. Ah, Oko, yes, of course. We should probably be playing Oko. Oko is super banned. The joke is this is Oko from uh, the Planeswalker deck. You'll notice that this Oko... Starts at 6 mana and 4 loyalty and has a plus 1 and a 0. This Oko costs 3 more mana and has a plus 1 and a 0 instead of a plus 2 and a plus 1. And they're worse. Like... <laughs> oh, God. Whatever, it's it's hilarious to me. Oh, the beanstalk giant and five actually.
Oh! Yeah, I'm building a ramp deck, right? Like... Look, Simic cards are good, okay? Alright, uh, let's do some plans. Oh, this is gonna be fun. Uh, how do we mana base? Oh boy. Fine. Give me a mountain, damn it. I went quiet because I just was thinking, sorry. That's, that's, like, my brain had to turn off to try to figure out how to mana base, alright? I apologize deeply. I uh, didn't mean to just go audio silence and dead air for you on that one. Um, anyway. Uh, yeah, some nonsense. Whatever. Let's go have some fun. I am here, though. Hi. Again, apologies on that. I, I did not mean to just disappear for, uh, <laughs> for like three minutes while I just try to figure out how the hell to mana base. I think I did, oh, look, it's, it, I, my amount of base is obviously wrong, and I'm sure there's a thousand people who can point out how and why. Um, I'm not going to worry about it right now. Sure, hopefully we can draw a couple more, get into Golos. It was big. Okay, aggression? That generally means aggression to me. Oh, nasty. Okay. We got oven shenanigans. This is gonna be like some sack deck, right? Then. Okay, let's go spiral it. We might trophy it. We don't have to do it right now, though. Trophying it right now, I think, is pulling the trigger a little too early. I don't, they seem a little bit... Okay, they've got their mana up and running. Okay, there's a white, black, green, blue... Shit, I don't have double red.
So I'm gonna go with Gigantha here. If Gigantha lives, we get Niv plus Golos. Okay. That's fine by me. Then we just get Golos. Golos. Yeah, let's take action. We want... I didn't even include any temples. Like, God, this mana base is bad. This mana base is so horrible. Don't look directly at this mana base, please. Companion decks seem very vulnerable to removal, but the thing is, like, what is... I, that's a zero for one, right? That card was nothing. Shit. Um, let's... Like, yeah, if it's key to your game plan and we lost it, that sucks, but it is a zero for one at the end of the day. You can run a companion as one and three in your deck as long as the companion meets its own criteria. Uh, I, which I think they all do, but, like, that would have to at least be true. Okay. Alright, are you ready, folks? We're gonna cast this as... As long as it's... Okay, yeah, the, the three cost on... There's a couple that don't. Because, yeah, you're right, the cat's three, but it wants two, two drops in your deck. Take that, take that, take that. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Sup? You show remorse, I'll show restraint. Let's go ahead and bounce the Slaughter Priest. I could bounce the Banishing Light, but I don't want to leave this and, like, all of a sudden die to something weird. Yeah, like, as, again, as long as the Commander fit, the, the Companion fits under its own restrictions, you're fine. So, like, and most of them do. Okay, alright. Damn. Okay, all right, um... Don't worry, I got this. <laughs> I got this. Um... The number of instant sorceries. You know what? Oh, God. Sorry. Ooh, a battle. I'm all tingly. Or it might just be static. Yeah, the auto tapper is going to murder my ass here. 
Because I need to cast Uro on this turn too, and that's double green, double blue. Okay, so Mothra goes off and bring it back. Boom goes the thunder. <laughs> All right. That worked out. I'm at 15. I've got Niv in the sky. I should be safe. It's a lot of priest of Mogis, actually, is it? Oh, all right, fine. Fine, I'm just gonna deafen and clear you next turn. <laughs> Assuming I'm not dead. Which I don't think so, I don't think so. A lot of priest of Mogis is really good at getting some damage in, but not that good. Okay. This deck is super sweet, by the way. This deck is this doing is a lot of work. My worst defeat. All right, let's go ahead and sweep. <laughs> okay, there's the sweep. Um... Hope we get something good. Mm, hope we get something good. Uh huh. Left grazer. Anyway. We need to life link up to 24, uh, and then next turn I get to I get to attack with Clothis because our boiled grazers are gonna turn it on. <laughs> Look at this! Oh, the power! Oh shit! All right, fine. Mythos of Snapdax. All right. Each player chooses an artifact, creature, and chim, and a planeswalker, and sacks the rest. Um, this is really bad. They should not be casting this spell. They just got, I guess, like, Golos, and then grab another breeding pool or something tapped. Priest of Forgotten. Sure. Alright, can we get... Yeah, let's get rid of Mothra. Alright, what are you... What's my devotion at? Bad? Oh boy. Um... Hmm. I don't know if I can get my devotion up high enough. Spin the wheel. This one. That's fine. <laughs> um, Night of Autumn. We're gonna go ahead and destroy target artifact over there. Let's play in our Boreal Grazer. Let's play in our Boreal Grazer. Blast that. Mm, I have some bad news for you. <laughs> Let's play a new Tefiri. I am not going to sit this one out. 
lost it to Fury. No, I am not making this up as I go. Let's attack with Clothis in our five color deck. That's fine by me. Pass. <laughs> no, this deck rules. Holy shit. Oh yeah, you can. Uh, that's fine by me. I'll discard a card or something. Yeah, I'll discard Duro. Hold on. Yeah, you gotta. I gotta get that out of there for you quick. Let me just. Let me just get that. There we go. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Okay. I like our opponent's deck. Uh, yep, okay, that's good. Alright, and then we probably just want to go, like, make a mana. A green, a blue, and a, like, I don't know, like 15 or something. How much is it, actually? Five. Oh, I'm sorry. Fourteen. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I was off by one. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> Casual, draw seven. Okay, this deck's sweet. Uh, yeah, this deck's pretty sweet. I don't even know if I want to do more, go in more detail on this deck. But this is... Let's do one more game of absolute nonsense. Let's see if how this works in one more round, and then we'll do... Oh, what next? I had a combo deck I was looking at. It seemed... Interesting, but I didn't quite understand what the win con was. Um, yes, yeah, it's fine. We've done multiple Sharknado decks. Our limited deck was a Sharknado deck. We had a constructed deck that was a Sharknado deck. We're we're a little we're, we've, we've we've done our Sharknados for the day. I appreciate and love that everyone is enjoying the Sharknados. Uh, but we, we, we have to restrict our, our, our Sharknados to only the most necessary. I'll just get that off the table. I don't want to let you ramp. Hmm. Don't keep killing your skull profits. It's a meta nerd that's a 3-1. Hey, there we go. Sure. Okay. Could be 40 rocks. We got this stuff going. Alright, Tefiri can't bounce that. Let's just do the Giganthia and see what happens. It's probably getting removed by a kill spell, but that's alright by me. Just go ahead and do your mur murder right now. Okay. Murk. Like, it's super necessary to be doing that. Okay, let's go ahead and get some Golos down. Uh, 
let's just go grab a I'm not gonna have removal for our. Yep. Whoa! That one's sweet. Mythos of Necro Nethroi. Destroy target not only permanent if it was a creature. Or if you spend black, white, green, you can kill anything that is in the land, including a planeswalker. It's worded a bit weird because of the way it works, but it has to be able to target anything in order to function. Alright, um, next turn we get like, oh, they're just cycling? That's strange. Okay, let's go ahead and go Los again. Uh, does that leave up? Yeah, it leaves up. That's fine. We've got Niv Mizzet as our refill. I just want to keep ramping at the moment. Yeah, uh, let's grab a breeding pool tapped. And pass the turn. We have two Hydroid Crises and a Niv, so we got refills. Whoa! Four cards in hand and you're activating a Castle Lockthwain. Respect. I will pay five life for a card. Hell yes, says my opponent. Any day of the week, pay five, pay five life for a card. Okay, we do want to kind of fill up the grave so we can get to Uro. We have enough stuff down there. Look, I'm a person who played six drops in uh, Dark Confidant decks in Standard L. I played Hit and Run in Confidant decks in Standard. Hit and Run. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> My army will envelop this world. Sure. Use the bat to shambles. They were a lousy servant anyway. I don't know what combo they could possibly be. All right, let's let's refill. Uh, Deferi, Ral, Clothis. We'll take the growth spiral off that. And let's. Protection from Edict. Only single Edict, though. Well, what can you hit? Creatures. Okay. Don't have a lot of Planeswalker answers other than combat. I guess cl getting Clothis into combat is a way of answering a creature, huh? I can bounce that. That's not a problem. Right. <laughs> Elspeth conquers death. Oh, boy. <laughs> Alright, so let's go ahead and play Teferi out. They probably have a response to kill Niv-Mizzet. That's what I would do. This isn't a fight you can win. I've got it. This is perfect. Getting to kill that Elspeth's Conqueror's death is really good for us. Um, Putting is super removal heavy, but I don't know how long they'll be able to sustain a one-for-one -one game plan against, like, Hydroid Crisises. They need some sort of card advantage engine, and I don't see it yet. Liliana's good, but like sooner, like that's that's not gonna stick. At least I hope it's not gonna stick. What's the plan? I keep killing all their stuff. <laughs> I see how bad is the damage. Huh. 
The Skull Prophet will land. Okay, they just get the Elspeth Conqueror's death. I understand your power now. So they get four for one on that. It's not nearly as bad as the damage could be. Hmm. Yeah. Rise and shine. Oh, well, he's definitely in Clarions, but they're not really something I want right now. Um, I think I might just be casting a Hydroid Crisis for, like... Let's say Hydroid Crisis for... Five? That's enough to beat Liliana Dreadhorde, and... Oh, but the Elspeth Conqueror's Death will block my Clarion that'll, that I want to use there. Why not have their board? Because they'll draw two cards. <laughs> I mean, I was also thinking of doing it at instant speed. That, that was why, because we have Teferi. I'm, there's a lot of reasons I'm doing what I'm doing. I, I don't like to think I'm not a moron here. I don't like letting them draw two off this, but I think I need to use the Krasis. Yeah, so now they drew five, and that's not great. Or they drew three, and they're going to be drawing more. I don't know. I The reason I want to do that at instant speed with the Clarion Ultimatum. Or not Clarion Ultimatum. Ah, Clarion Ultimatum. This is not a Clarion Ultimatum, by the way. Sadly, this deck can't contain Ultimatum. Okay, they're gonna kill that with some more one-for-one -one removal. I need that Liliana off the damn table. I cannot win in a long game against that Liliana because, like, I talked about how we have, like, a, a card advantage engine, and they're just doing one-for-one -one removal. This is enough of an engine to draw them a billion cards that I can't, like, stop it. Yeah, because they're just going to back this up with one-for-one -one removal for the rest of the game until I draw my own one-for- What do I have for- Huh. Bladeswalker removal is kind of hard to come by when I'm restricted by my general. That's annoying. Okay, that's more. Only time will tell. So if I kill Liliana, she just comes back. Good help is easy to find in war. Let's go ahead and we'll play five mana Teferi. That will be pretty good, right? I'm known for my excellent timing. That's more like it. Let's get some lands in play. Okay. The roll will be nice. All right, they're going to get a creature back, and then they're going to make my stuff cost more. Hey, it's a skull. Skull profit. It's fine. If I can... If I can kill Liliana, I still need to get rid of the Elspeth Conqueror's death there? Oh. Oh, I see their loop. Oh, that's, um... Hmm. Very impressed by the, the engine they have here with Elspeth Conqueror's Death and the Ultimatum. That gets a little spicy very quick. So they probably exile Uro here. And if I wrath this, they draw four cards kind of have to do anyway. Mm. We lost our god. There's no two-mana god. We still have Teferi around. We can play Ral. Oh, well, there's the fairy gone. Oh, so that's, that's a that's a permanent, so they can get it back. That makes sense. 
Um, let's... Decisions, decisions. Mm. Fair man has been quite good. I still have a crisis for a refill here. What are you ult? What do you do? I'm trying to oh, please get out of the way. I'm trying to read. Yeah. Okay. I don't want that Liliana to ult. That little, that's like literally Armageddon. Okay. Well, what do you do? Okay. You give me some damage. Fabled Passage is quite good in this deck, because that's a land you get back with the Eerie Ultimatum. Now, the, here's the question. Is there an E-Witness? Do they have a way to get back this Ultimatum? This doesn't exile. That's very good with the Ultimatum as well. They can sack... Step yeah, they're oath. Be crushed. The, I am impressed with the synergy this deck has. This is very powerful stuff. Yep, there's a destroy on my. That's fine. Putrid, but effective. Glory Fine Broker is a permanent. That doesn't pick up an ultimatum. That's not an e-witness. Um. So I've got green. Did that tap my black? Oh my god, that tap my black. Auto tapper. Okay, that's fine. That's annoying, but we'll just kill the Liliana next turn. That'll be okay. Here's the thing. I don't want to kill the Liliana right now. It's a bad idea to do that because Elspeth Conquer's death would literally just bring it back. So we want to wait until that Elspeth Conger's death is gone. So it's fine to wait one turn. It's actually like we want to wait one turn because we literally do... Like if I kill this and they just get it back, that'll feel dumb. Oh my god. Alright. Skull prop... Yes! Alright, third ultimatum in the yard. Do they have a way to pick that up? If there's a card that can pick that up in these colors, that's going to be really powerful. Okay. Two triumphs. So they... Yeah, that's fine. Zorch. Forgive this. <laughs> okay, I think we're out of the woods for the moment. So let's cycle this. I think we're okay for the moment. We're gonna go ahead and Assassin's Trophy your Liliana. News. Time to go. We're gonna Clarion here. 
And you don't draw six cards off that. Now we're gonna Niv Misery Ball. Alright, Niv, what do you got for us? Fury Crisis? That's fine by me. Um. Okay, kill my Niv. I know my responsibility. I've got time. What's up, Duro? How you doing? We're running out of deck. I only have 11 cards left. <laughs> hmm. Again, I'm, I'm very scared if they actually have a way to pick up the ultimatum. I don't know if they do, because they haven't printed, like, flat E-Witness in so long. Uh, they have 20 cards left in deck. I can't play Jason here it, with, um, with my, uh, with my commander, with my companion. That is not legal. Okay. The reason Uro works is that this is the escape cost, not the mana cost. Alright, Niv. <laughs> Alright, what does my deck contain? Okay, here's the win con right here. We're gonna Kenrith and we're gonna absolutely obliterate our opponent. That's the game. How am I casting this crisis? We're going to wait till Kenrith next turn. That's why we're waiting. We're, we're trying to get all their removal now. And if they take some damage from Castle Lockthwain, that should actually, like, help. Kenrith is five to take any creature out of the grave. Um, we have a lot. Okay, I don't really care about that. That's kind of an irrelevant card. That's a land. That's a draw, and that puts you at 15. That's good. And then they're gonna kill my Krasis, yep. Pity we couldn't have been allies. And then they're gonna play you. Oh! Nice. Okay. Alright, I'm gonna Growth Spiral in case we do draw land there, because I actually want mana. Alright, um... One, two, three, four, five, something. This is hardly my worst defeat.
All creatures gain trample and haste. And attack. I think we have this game. <laughs> and just, you know, we got some lands or whatever. I don't know. And then we should trample over for exactly lethal. Ooh. <laughs> Kenrif. <laughs> we ran him out of cards. Like, okay, that's uh, that's sweet. Feeling pretty sweet on that. All right. <laughs> oh, thanks, Niv. Thanks. Uh, we need more Planeswalker removal in that deck. Um, the, uh, the, the card, I think, actually, that even if it doesn't make, like, work with Niv, the mythos of um, this is probably a very strong card to have in that deck. Just as, like, destroy target Planeswalker, but it's playable under the commander. Because a lot of the things that are... While a lot of the cards that destroy a Planeswalker... Um... Like, directly... Are generally double black, if you're trying to do it directly, Murderous Rider. There are some that aren't, but they're not nearly as, like... Like, Eat to Extinction might also be a way to do it. That's a little more expensive, but that works. I always think of this... Anyway, um, we've got a little bit of time before we switch over to, or we take a short break, and then we switch over to um, uh, Final Fantasy XIII 2. So, I think uh, we've got like half an hour. Do we have enough time for one more deck? And if so, what do we want? I've already done some absolute nonsense today. Take one more look at some companions, see if there's any others that... No, that's a land. Really want this one to work. I feel like there's a deck here. Have a good one, Verdant Squire. But yeah, we're... So yeah, like I said... We're going to be doing this right now, and then we're going to be switching over to Final Fantasy XIII 2 afterwards, like normal. Our normal, regularly scheduled programming is Final Fantasy XIII 2, a little after 7. Um, you won't get a notification in the email or anything like that, because that's the way Twitch works. If you go live once a, like in the day, it doesn't give you a live notification for the second one. That's why I'm making a big deal about continuously saying it, because otherwise you just don't know it exists, right? So that's that's why I seem to be a, a broken clock about it. Apologies. Um, Oh my god. 
Oh my god, I wasn't ready for the token. <laughs> it's just, we got the scale cat, how are you doing? <laughs> oh. What do we want to build with it? Sadly, this cat doesn't fit in the deck, but yeah, this one. Yes, that is. Uh, going to fit in the deck. And uh, the card itself is a cat, so you can main deck the other three. Wait. That's incorrect and illegal, right? That, 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 that should not work. There we go. Thank you. It's because I had them crafted. I was like, that's that's illegal. I know I know how this works. Th this one has to sit in the sideboard. Um Luris, you're a cat. <laughs> Mono white cats. Green white cats. a cat, right? Creature card, okay. Mm. We don't want a 7-drop in this deck. We can play one as a joke, but, like, this is a deck that curves out on 3, and it's probably playing, like, 22 lands. <laughs> so... Mutate on you. Cauldron Familiar is right here. Uh, I'm I'm looking at like I don't know if we want to go into three color just for one more cat. Land and War Leader I think did rotate. I think that was M nineteen. We get Cub Warden instead. This is our, our replacement for Lean and War Leader. When it mutates. Um, oh, that's definitely what we're finishing this deck off with. Good. There was a Windows noise. Um, all right, so we want Temple of Garden and Temple of Plenty. Do I want Blossoming Sands as well? This deck is never hitting seven mana. So, like, including that card doesn't do anything. Like, this is literally a deck that has, like, 20 lands in it. Like, I know it's 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 a, a, a funny, it's a really cool card. We'll get to it in a draft, is what I mean to get to it. I, I, I don't see that as something I want to do something in Constructed with. I see that as something I want to do in Draft with. Let's include the Blossom of Sands. Actually, no, we don't need those. There are two, there's, yeah, there is a green-white cycle land. 
It's probably better than Blossoming Sands. Um, just put in four of the Triome. Call it good. Cool. I don't even think we need that many of that. We only have green for the Bronze Eyed Lion. Is this a commander deck? No, this is standard. So the text on Kahiri here, or the Orphan Guard, is Companion. Companion is effectively letting you have an EDH general. Um, it has a restriction. The restriction for this one is uh, creature types in your deck. Uh, we're going off the cat side, but it has a lot of creature types that are legal for it. And it pumps them and gives them vigilance. Um, if you meet the companion requirement, you can have it as the young little companion up here. And it is castable for outside of the game. It doesn't go back into the companion zone. Like, it doesn't go back into the general zone or whatever. Like an EDH general. It just dies. But it's there. Basically, we get to play a mono cat deck. Mm -hmm. We get to play a mono cat deck. Uh, cat stream. Um, with this as a card outside of our deck, whereas we already have like a ton of cats that we're always gonna draw, right? So that's the idea. All right, let's go have some fun with cats. That'll finish up the stream. Maybe we're gonna do one more game of uh, our draft. And then we'll go ahead and switch it over to uh, Final Fantasy 13 too. If you haven't been watching that, I, 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 it's it's a ton of fun. It's a blast. Uh, it's a dumb game that's just very fun. Ah. Cast 9 versus Slyo 9. Oh, crap. Alright. It's fine by me. Sure, this looks cool. Let's keep... You're making a cat deck every time. <laughs> Look. <laughs> we just always gotta have some form of cat deck, and this set has a, a new cat for us. Alright, we're gonna go ahead and pay two life for this, because we want to get the Bronze Hide Lion going. Bronze Hide Lion is a really good cat. This is a lion, obviously, but it's a cat. Okay, um, we're gonna go ahead and play our general. That will pump our cats. Look at this beatdown. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Fires. And are you gonna sweep? Shatter the sky. Alright. No! Okay, yes. Oh, did it in the right way. Oh, my God. Ooh, Luris. I think I want that right now. Um, I think we're gonna go Pride Maid. So we can't mutate onto this. This is a human soldier. That's why I didn't mutate there. Okay, Krasis for two. Then they get one more spell for free, because they're fires. What's their free spell? Golos. Okay. It's fine. It's annoying, but fine. Yeah, our opponent's gonna be doing a lot of shenanigans the next turn here. Alright, we can play Luris and we can get back the Garrison Cat. And that might go wide enough for, like, Huntmaster Liger to be able to win us the game? Let's try that. Actually, let's see what the Temple's got for us first. I don't want that right now. And Luris, and then Luris lets us cast Garrison Cat. Uh, no attackers. We're just trying to go a wide board so that Huntmaster Liger, which pumps our team, can get us the kill. But fires out of our opponent. Yeah, they're gonna keep going value here. Alright. 
We need to get over some Kraysai. I get one more spell on the turn. So Fires is optional. You can still spend your mana, which is why the Kraysis still works. So I get one more free spell on the turn. What do they got? What's your What's your game? Okay. Fetch a land. All right. Okay. Pumpmaster Liger. So that'll plus one, plus one. It's not really enough to get over much. I might go Cub Warden instead. Hey, I only want the Cub Warden on top. Because that gets us two cat. And now, like, we can go wide. Hopefully, if I draw six land, we can double Huntmaster Liger, and that should be enough to just push lethal. Because that's plus, that's an overrun, literally. Are they going to cast that Golos? Oh, fuck. Ultimatums. Oh, yeah, all right. Uh, this is where the game ends, ain't it? Hmm. So I need to kill you. <laughs> oh crap. Hey y'all, I got bad news. Hmm. Kicking your ass. It's another temple. Strive for a peaceful resolution. True friends always stand by your side. Okay. We might just lose here because they have nine power if they do have another ultimatum. Uh. Hmm. They could. Okay, come on. Golos, flip the other three ultimatums. I'm not saying you have to do it, but you have to do it, right? Golos activation, flip three ultimatums. <laughs> I hope we meet again soon. Oh, yeah, that was basically an ultimatum. You're not wrong. Okay. Yep, that's fine. Yep, that's fine. No problem here. All right. Seriously, you gotta. You need me. I need more ultimatums. Um, let's play a cat. Okay. Good. Seriously, you, 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 you are requi- I don't think my opponent plays cards under the cost of seven in their deck. Oh my god. Alright, let's do one more run with Cat. That was- that, that's the power of Fires of Invention. That card, uh... Hoofa uh, with ultimatums. That's that's got another uh, a level to its engine, as it were. Uh, both the Jess guy and Teamer ultimatum draw five cards. So, oof. some power is what I'm saying. Um, this is fine. Fire is going to be a deck for the next year and a half, so... You... Yeah. <laughs> Thousand Storms Ultimatum. Alright, so let's go ahead and play our Triome. We're going to get to play, like, Ajani's and some Cub Warden to make some lifelink tokens to go with our Ajani's. 
He was a bride maid. Oh, if you're on one for one removal, I don't know how long you're gonna be able to last against a deck like this. We got enough uh, power to back this. Yeah, they're just one for one removaling me. Um, if they find some card draw, that'll work. Also, if I don't find fourth land, that'll work. But I feel like they can't keep that up for too long. Oh boy. Um, it's gas general. All right, I understand your deck. I get it. Really want to mutate this Cub Warden. That will effectively trounce their, their, their plans. That's not the draw I need. Let's go ahead and play another Kahiri here. Yep, another Ionize. We're just going to be doing this for days. I want to cut down the. I think actually, with the only four drops we have, we might not. We might have too heavy of a burden. That's on me. I'll be on Lost Pride. Okay, we're cycling Godzilla, sure. <laughs> That's the win con. We're cycling Godzilla. Okay. Pay two life. Whoa, that scares me. The hell are you paying two life for? Mutate it, and we'll go on Garrison Cat. If they kill the creature in response, the spell still resolves. Yeah, okay. I understand. <laughs> and Thirst. Do you have an enchantment to discard, or you just... Nope, two lands. Alright, so they'll have that last Ionize. Resolve Luris. Do I have a thing I can pull back? I do not. I need another land. I'll be have a pullback with that. Kill our Leonin? Okay. Let's go to combat first, and then post-combat Luris. I'm gonna leave the Cub Warden mutate in hand. Okay. I've got a shark that kills me in three unless I have a Johnny pump. Interesting, they're attacking. That's scary. And I'm still be holding another shark. Oh, just a wrath. I get to keep a body, so it's not too bad. I keep moving those ionizes. Can't mutate onto that. It's a human. Ah, 
Hi, my name's Luris. And I'm gonna keep playing back Lena the Lost Pride. <laughs> now they're gonna quench it. No, no quench. Alright, lethal damage on the board. And step thirst for some more card draw. They might be able to discard a shark. Because the shark is an enchantment. Yep. Okay, they actually did have an enchantment to discard that omen. Okay. They can cast uh Godzilla. It's a Godzilla counter over here, by the way. So they can cast Godzilla, but they can't kill us with it. And Okay, draw three main phase. They're looking for something. Discard another omen. Good. It's probably got to kill Luris on their turn, or else we get free value again. Interesting. Um. Hmm. So they're gonna have to shark. It only makes a 3-3 three, three, though. Or they have just like a kill spell. But I, so I play Lurus pre-combat. Okay, Brazen Borrower. Sure. Hi, Johnny. Um, they're at three. Okay, that's cycle two on Godzilla. <laughs> oh, they're searching. Oh, my God. Well, they have to search every known one top, one bottom, so they found a card they like. Is it something that stops lethal? A land. I'm gonna mutate, and that should give me two lethal threats, so you have to answer two of them now. And if you bounce the garrison cat, I still get the cub warden. I just don't get the mutate trigger. Okay, let's attack for lethal, and they have to make a Godzilla to block? Right. Oh no, they got nothing, they're out. Cats did it. Woohoo! Oh, so I didn't mention this about mutate. When you go to make your monster grow, if they kill the creature in response, it still comes in. It's rare, but it works. Alright. We, we have defeated the infinite I and I as master with our cat deck. Cat deck has done its job. Uh, and we've reached uh, the end of the stream. Weird, that's not... A, yeah, I know. Mutate, Mutate has a lot of oddities to it like you know you get like killing it you know the comes in you don't get the mutate trigger though because it didn't mutate even though it was cast with mutate it's it's a whole thing uh anywho so that's that's uh that's gonna be it for right now we are going to be switching over to final fantasy 13 2 after a short break i want to quick grab myself uh a dinner uh we'll see how things go so um yeah let's uh we'll i'll see you in just a short while thank you all for joining hope you all had fun with this if you want to catch more of this watsy sponsored uh pre-release stuff you can always check on the youtube for the older stuff but uh if you want to catch other cards you can always follow see when you're live uh you can uh subscribe cool school school slime support the stream if not Yes, absolutely, 100%. 13-2 is still happening, 100%. I, I cannot repeat this enough, because you will not get 
an email for it. They won't tell you it's happening because that's how Twitch works. <laughs> Twitch won't give you a second notification for a second stream going up on the same day. So I have to repeat this as much as possible. Anyway, um, so yeah, I will see you in about 20 minutes or so, give or take. I'm going to get myself a little dinner, and then um, I'll see you on the other side. Thank you uh, for joining. Uh, catch you in a little bit.